What is going on guys, it's Boy coming to you once again with some more 3D Anatomy, courtesy of AnatomyLearning.com. Please support them by visiting their website, linked in the description box below. So this is going to be a relatively short video, um, and that's because there's pretty much only three, actually only two, but technically three sometimes, I'll explain what I mean about that in a second three muscles that we have to deal with on the anterior portion of the pelvis. So hopping right into it, the names of the two muscles you're going to have to memorize in this portion are going to be the psoas and the iliacus. Psoas and the iliacus. Now both of these muscles are very similar in regards to their insertion point they both insert at the lesser trochanter the lesser trochanter as you can see here both of these muscles sort of come together and insert into the lesser trochanter we saw before a lot of muscles insert onto the greater trochanter but this is really the first time that we see muscles actually inserting into the lesser trochanter and like most other muscles, it is this insertion point that really governs the movement. So if you can sort of imagine either of these muscles contracting and pulling on the femur from where it inserts, you can sort of imagine that it actually pulls the femur forward. It flexes the hip. This is in direct contrast to the gluteus maximus. If you remember, the gluteus maximus was back here, and it pulls the femur backward, extending the hip. So the psoas and the iliacus, or together the iliopsoas, are antagonists of the gluteus maximus. They do the opposite of what the gluteus maximus does. The gluteus maximus extends the hip, and the iliopsoas flexes the hip. The difference between these muscles actually lies on where they originate. The iliacus actually originates on the pelvis, whereas the psoas originates on the spine, more specifically the lumbar spine and part of the thoracic spine, the last vertebra of the thoracic spine. Now the consequences of this become especially profound when you consider that the psoas is actually the muscle that I talked about in an earlier video where the origin and insertion can actually switch places. So depending on what other muscles are being active at any given point, you can actually keep the, pel the femur stable and cause the psoas to actually pull on the spine. What that will do is that will cause flexion of the trunk. It will cause the spine to bend and flex forward. In that case, the spine is functioning as the insertion and the femur is functioning as the origin. So as a direct result of this, the iliacus is only responsible for flexion of the hip, whereas the psoas can be responsible for either the flexion of the hip or the flexion of the trunk. Now, it's worth mentioning that even though I call this the psoas muscle, what I actually have been talking about this whole time is the psoas major. The psoas major. There are sometimes also a, another muscle present called the psoas minor, which would extend from the spine to the iliopubic eminence, the iliopubic eminence that we've talked about before. The psoas minor actually doesn't appear all of the time, only some of the time, but when it does, it is responsible for, you can guess, it's responsible for flexion of the spine. It's not responsible for flexion of the thigh because, well, it's not connected to the thigh. This is one of those times where you can sort of deduce the function just by looking at the attachments. Wrapping things up, I want to talk about one more thing, which is this ligament right here. It's called the ingu inguinal ligament. The inguinal ligament actually runs from the superior anterior iliac spine 
to the pubic tubercle. The significance of the inguinal ligament is that a lot of things run through it. For one, the midpoint is actually a marker for the femoral artery and the femoral nerve. Alrighty guys, so that concludes our discussion on the muscles of the pelvis. Next, we're gonna jump right into the muscles of the thigh, starting with the anterior or front muscles of the thigh, the medial muscles of the thigh, and finally, the posterior muscles of the thigh before we move down to the lower leg and foot. So I hope you're excited about that. All right, guys, take care. Goodbye. Anatomylearning.com. Check them out.